thank you, Mamie, for doing this. Uh, you know, with this being a show to our, our church members, I just wanted to uh, catch them up on a few things. And one of them just being the fact that you're one of the first people from the church that Mandy and I had the privilege of meeting and you helped us find our home that we're living in. And so uh, that whole journey was uh, was such a blessing for, for be, mostly because you were a part of it. And I, I had you in mind of wanting to interview you about just what God has done in your life within the last several years that uh, uh, that you've been battling cancer. And, uh, but now that we're going through Job as a church, it, it just seems like a really uh, great opportunity for the church to be encouraged as I've been encouraged by you so many times in our conversations and, and uh, w whether on the phone or in person, uh, just seeing your positive spirit and your encouragement in Christ, uh, I would love to be able share that with the rest of the congregation and, and anyone who might be anyone else who might be going through various kinds of sufferings. Um, and, and so I, I guess to start off, I would love for you to just briefly describe your cancer journey, uh, when it began and maybe some significant moments during that time. Um, my cancer journey started in 2012, February of 2012, I got the diagnosed, um, not with breast cancer, but with cervical cancer, got diagnosed with that. And at that time, they thought I also had uh, breast cancer. I had to have some surgeries and I had to have a total hysterectomy. Uh, the cancer, which at first I thought was nothing, you know, just a little bit, ended up being a lot more invasive than I thought it was. And it was getting up into the uterus with pre-cancer there. And it was definitely cancer on the cervix. So they did do a total hysterectomy and they did a biopsy on the breast cancer or the breast. And they said that it came back negative. They told me I dodged a bullet. And I just praise God because I myself knew it was an answer to prayer. And at that time, the doctor says, no, you have no more cancer in you. And I, you know, I was just so ecstatic. It was every six months I had to go back and get another mammogram. Well, then, um, and it had grown, but it was misdiagnosed. By the time I got, uh, it was a year later, I got the diagnosis in 2013 of the breast cancer. In 2012, it was the size of a pea, this doctor said, that did the um, ultrasound. And in 2012, when I had the surgery, or 13, when I had the surgery, it was the size of a baseball. I had a lumpectomy to begin with, and then it spread, uh, and plus I had chemo and radiation. And then it had spread, um, and I ended up having to have it spread to the other side as well. And I ended up having to have um, a double mastectomy in 2014. And then since then, I have been on chemo, different kinds, all kinds. I got, I'm, I have um, triple negative breast cancer. It's stage four um, metastatic, and they say there's no cure. Uh, one of the hardest things was when I found out I had it again, uh, or, you know, when I found out they made a mistake and I truly had it. And um, I would say through treatments and everything, one of the hardest things was losing my hair, my identity, my, um, my health, my being able to make appointments and being able to go, my, my independence, actually, because right now, uh, I'm not saying the cancer has control over me, but it sure does make it hard to do things. Um, the chemo caused neuropathy and it's very hard to walk with the pain in my feet and that and the numbness. Um, but God has just always seen me through every step. I was so terrified in the beginning and God just gave me so much comfort and I would pray through all these scans 
I would just pray that I make it through the ski and I would freak out so bad. But, you know, God has a way of comforting and, and, you know, when, um, when you get to a point like this and, and, and you know that I know God's there for me, he has been with me throughout my entire life. I accepted him as, as a child. And, um, I had made lots and lots and lots of mistakes through life and he's pulled me through. Is there anything else that you want to expand on as far as uh, what has helped you stay encouraged in your faith in Christ uh, through all of this? I had been very blessed as far as a child to my mom had sent me to church early on. And I have always loved God. You know, I've always as an adult and on and depended on him for everything. Um, being a single parent, raising three boys, I depended and, and being a realtor. So my commission, my ba my income was commission. And people, how can you do that? And I say, how can I not do it? You know, God, I, I, I had just been so blessed. I've been able to support my kids, build a house. None of that would have happened through God. And my faith in God is just always seeing these miracles around me throughout my whole life. Uh, what would you say to someone who might may not necessarily see God and how you've been seeing God through all of it? I would say, I guess, to pray about it and and know that God's that God's there to help us through any type of journey, any type of um, any type of hardships, be it any type, and and have the faith that He's going to come through. And, and I would say the strongest thing is having that faith in the hope, not, not just hope, hope in the future, not hope is like, I hope this is going to happen, but faith, like it is going to happen. Mm. When I say hope, I mean, hope for like a new drug or something like that. But um, there's not, as far as God goes, there's, there's hope in the future, but uh, it's not a matter of hoping there's God. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If if I hear you right, your your emphasis is on the fact that our hope is in Jesus Christ for our eternal life, no matter what how things might look here on earth. That yes. our hope is always going to be in Christ and, and bringing us to His heavenly kingdom in the end, and we have that to always look forward to. Is that yes? Kind of what getting at? I know no matter what, I know where I'm going, but I just don't want to get there yet. <laughs> yeah the lord still has things for you to do here it looks like yes I, i'm hoping so <laughs> <laughs> you're still um, here so the answer i think it'll be yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and i just pray this new drug this new chemo works you know and, and getting this down and again i i'm not just praying for getting it down i'm praying for a cure one way or another and, you know, there has to be one day when that happens to somebody, right? Yeah. Why not me, right? Yeah. Well, great. I mean, that that was, uh, all that was awesome. Maybe thank you so much for sharing with us. And uh, we as a church, we're always praying for you. We've been praying for you. And uh, we look forward to uh, God bringing you back through the doors uh, when you're physically able to. And, and we, it would bring a smile to a lot of people's faces. <laughs> yes, I pray for that too. And you know, I just also want to thank thank you, Mandy, and thank everybody at the church for all their prayers and all of their oh kindness and loving. And I just I just thank everybody so much.